Have a seat. I'm losing my shoe, honey. No, you can do anything. Seriously. Fix that. She's too cute. Uh, I am so excited to talk to you because there is nothing sexier and hotter than talent. And damn. <laughs> <laughs> I like this crew. Y'all don't care what you say. I like it. <laughs> I, listened, I listened to your album yesterday, and it reminded me of when I went to buy Janet Jackson and Fiona Apple, and it was a coherent album from start to finish. It wasn't three right. singles with, like, five fillers. Yeah, thank you. I didn't want that. Well, I would assume. <laughs> I didn't want that. You know, I fought for this album so much to the point where I think I kind of got on people's nerves. But I've been doing this for 12 years. And... Um, I grew up around nothing but music. Everybody on my father's side sings. First cousins, Casey and JoJo. We started in the church. So that means I love music across the board, not just gospel, but R&B, pop, rock, jazz, uh, you know, country. I have a country song on my album. Because I said, I'm not gonna allow anybody to put me in a box anymore. How are you gonna tell me what to sing and how to sing it if I'm the artist? Right? It's weird. It's almost like, you know, if, you, if I'm the artist, as soon as I come in, you want to tell me what the look should be, what the sound should be, then that means you're prostituting my gift and I'm not the artist anymore. You're telling me what to be, what to do. I couldn't do it anymore. You see what I'm saying? So there were times where I was in the studio and I would tell them, if I can't do it, then I quit. And when I say that, people are like, yeah, right. I'm like, no, I'm serious. Because it's a lot out here. I sacrifice a lot. I'm away from my children. I'm away from my family. Every day you got to worry about if they're saying something good, something bad. So if I'm going to do it, let me do it my way. Amen. Yeah. Now, you were... Amen. <laughs> well, it's hard not to get caught up in your passion. I mean, yeah. so much of music today is just, it's manufactured. Everything sounds the same. You, you literally, I mean, I was driving the other day. We had the radio on, and it was like, you can't tell who's singing what because it's all the same production. All the same auto tune, am I right? She said it, I mean, not right. me, okay? Am I right? Like, I like, I'm not gonna name any names, but I would defy you guys to listen to five songs right now and name exactly who worked on them because it's all identical. Yeah, you know, and I don't knock anybody and what they do. I stay in my own lane. I just know that I have to stay true to real music. I was the only five year old girl that was listening to songs that was like way ahead of my time. But it was something about it. It was something about when you turned on Aretha Franklin. It was something about when you turned on a little Luther, a Patti LaBelle, a Elton John, a Bonnie Raider. You know who they, they had? Are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they had so much soul that she was just like, I felt that, or it, it encouraged me, or it moves me. And that's the type of music that I do. So, what was your process in creating this album? Emphasis on album. Yeah, I started this album a long time ago. And I ain't gonna say no names, but I was working with a producer that was a little difficult at first. Um, and, and he's an artist himself, so I, you know, I could tell that he's focusing on his stuff and trying to focus on me as well, and it just wasn't working. Um, and so I remember going home and I called the label. I was so pissed, I'm like, listen, we've got to get this album out. Because this is how I feed my children. We're not moving. I had been sitting for four years. Thank God I was able to still travel off of Free Yourself and Bittersweet and Truth Is. And so that's a blessing. He like, yeah, girl, that's my song. <laughs> Thank God for that. And that's, that's timeless music. So I was still traveling, but, but, but the buzz was going down. And I wasn't getting the looks that I wanted and, and doing certain things that I wanted. So I called them, I said, something, we've got to do something different. So I'm a dreamer. I've been a dreamer since I was a kid. Anybody in here dream, anybody? Okay. Do, you, do you write down your dreams? You remember your dreams? There's messages in your dreams. So I always write down my dreams, and in my dream, it was telling me that I needed to switch up my feet, meaning I needed to switch up my team, I needed to get some people out the way, because how many of you guys know that we have a destiny, but sometimes people can come into our life and we can't go there because they're not the right people to get us there, That's right. right? Or they're in your life for, at a certain time for right. a reason, for and a then reason. it's time to go. So I needed to switch up my feet, so I changed management, and I went with an amazing team by the name of Primary Wave. And I said to them, I'm working with, an, with a certain producer and it's just not working. So they said, listen, why don't we do this? I had just came off of After Midnight, which was a Broadway play here in New York, a jazz play. 
love jazz. They said, why don't we put out a jazz album? I said, well, okay, whatever we need to do to get the ball rolling. They took me and introduced me to Ron Fair, which is if you guys have never heard of Ron Fair, you know about Ron Fair? Ron Fair is a beast. <laughs> he worked with, he produced a lot of Mary J. Blige, Keisha Cole, um, the OJs. He started uh, Christina Aguilera. He, rec you know, he, he, he's, he's just a beast. And so I got with him, I went in, and I, I'm a watcher. I watch people, because they watch me. <laughs> so I watch him back. But I watched him, and he played all types of videos. He's this white guy, wear glasses, little hat, Chuck Taylors, with so much soul. So he started playing jazz videos, and then he went from jazz to the OJs, from OJs to Aretha Franklin. From, and I, I noticed the songs that he was playing was the sound that I was looking for. I knew then that that's where I was going to stay, and he was going to be the one that I did the whole album with. And that's how we came up with the definition of. What is the definition of? How would you define yourself? It's rock soul. People say, what do you mean when you say that? That means it's a little bit of everything. Soul is in me. That will never leave. You're going to always get a, ah, <laughs> Or a lip quiver, like, you know. <laughs> I can't help that. But I grew up on good music. And so I wanted to bring that to my album. I wanted to bring a little bit of everything. And God gave it to me, rock soul. The definition of, I feel like everything that I've been through, I feel like I'm every woman at this point. There ain't nothing. You, people can say some bad things about me, but they can also say, but she turned it around and she did this, she did that, she did this. So I'm the definition of every, whatever you want to put behind that. The de definition of a fighter. The definition of strength, the definition of music. Like, I feel like I'm every woman at this point, and I put it into this album. When you go in the studio, how do you find your voice? I mean, how did you find, for lack of a better word, the balls to just say, this isn't working for me, I want something different? Come on. After, well, been, after everything that I've been through, and to, to stand through all of that, nobody can tell me anymore. It's, it's almost like, and it's not me being like, it's not me being mean or me being cocky. It's just me saying, I made it. You, if, if, if you could have walked in my shoes, I promise you would have gave them back. <laughs> Somebody would have said, oh, hell no, you can have that. I made it through those things, so I'm at a place now where I'm taking control of my own destiny. Whenever I put it in other people's hands, it always failed. Mm. Always. Cheers, baby. Amazing. You know, wait, you don't have nothing else to put in this cup? We can choose. <laughs> we're not, we're not going to tell you guys what's in this cup. <laughs> Am I straight? So, I need a hanky like my grandma would We're not in the studio with you. Take me to the studio when you're working on this album. What was the process like? Well, when we first went in, I told Ron Fair, I said, I want to put mini cams all over the studio. Because working with him was, 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 you know, he's different. You know, I like to run my peppermint. I, got, I have a steamer, and I put peppermint in it. And he's so dramatic. The next day I came, he has, like, these big industrial fans. He has coffee beans. He's like, oh, I just can't take it. I'm like, come on, Ron. Wait, can't take what? The, the peppermint? The peppermint. Yeah, he's just like, oh, I'm allergic. I'm breaking out. I'm like, no, you're not. <laughs> you just... <laughs> so we had our times. And I said, Ron, I want to put mini cams everywhere because I want people to actually see the fight for this album. I want people to actually see how we set and created a lot of it. He would go over to the piano. We would write stuff right there. Uh, sometimes we would fight about it. I'm like, that's not it. He would tell me it was. Sometimes he was right. Sometimes I was right. But I said, I want people to see the process. There were days when I would go in, he would have to encourage me. There were days when I would go in, I would have to encourage him. Because the, the thing is, Ron's been in the music business for way longer than I have. And so he's experienced the music business. Let's just be honest, y'all. It's a it's you, it, I was going to say a bad word, but I'd rather you say it for me. It's some bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is. And so he had his stories where he felt like, I I'm done with it. I'm done with it. If I can't do what I want to do, you know, I've had me, people to make me promises after promise. He was, he was just kind of over it. So there would be days when I would have to go in and build him up and let him know that your gift is needed. I need you. 
Because what we're going to do, people are going to be blessed by it. Somebody needs to hear this. Somebody wants to hear good music. Some other artist is watching and saying, if they can do it, I can do it. So we pushed each other. I said, let's document that. I've always been an open artist. I've always been very honest. And I like that. That means I can get up out of my bed and I don't have to pretend to be something that I'm not. And that works better for me. I share my story to bless other people. Some judge it. Some say thank you. And that's all, it's a ministry for me. So I felt like we should record everything while we're in here. Record the ups and downs. Record the times where I would lay on the floor and sing. Like some songs I was really? like, I can't, yeah. I was like, I can't sing it like that. It's not coming out right. Let's just lay down, put the mic. I mean, weird stuff. But it always comes out good. It's like I had to find that, that space I needed to be in to get that emotion. Um, and we, we documented everything so that people could see it and see the honesty and see the truth and see, you know, that we're really in this album. We're, we're all in it, our heart, our soul. We put everything into it. What was your aha moment in the music industry where you're like, I want to do it my way or not at all? Sleeping with the one I love. Because they said, nah, that can't be the next single. It's too churchy. The radios ain't playing nothing like that. So I said, no, no, no. It's sleeping because I realized when we do the live shows, sleeping is like that song for me. As soon as I say, I'm sleeping, everybody's like, yes! Yeah! <laughs> and I told them, I said, you don't get to see or feel what I feel when I'm on the stage. I said, we dropped No Time For It, which is a very cute record, but I love the message in it, which was telling people, me coming back, I have no time for drama. I have no time. Keep keep your opinions to yourself. Because I get fans that come up to me and be like, girl, I almost beat somebody up at the gas station because they was talking about you. And I'm like, girl, don't, don't quit fighting. <laughs> I'm good. It's okay. <laughs> but it was the message in the song that I felt like, go ahead and drop that one. But when you come back, we got to remind people of what it was they voted for me for, which was real singing. Free Yourself was not a record that was on, on the radio stations. Free Yourself is a good old church song. If you don't want me, then I'll talk to me. So, so it was like people voted for me for that, that, that soul, that edge. I said, we got to drop that. And they said, no, 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 it's not the one. Then with the video, I said, let's do something totally different. So we kind of ran with a little bit of Chicago. With the Broadway play Chicago. I said, we're going to do, we're going to show them how we can act, do something different. No, that was too much. I stood on it. When it came out, everybody loved the song. And that was my moment uh, when I saw one of my, my label, you know, partners at, at, out at the BET Awards. He walked up and he said, you were right. And I had that look like, mm. I said, yeah, I told you. So that, was a, that, that made me feel good to, to be able to know that I'm taking control of my destiny and I'm following my heart and it's working. It's and by the way, speaking of the BET Awards, you shut it down. That was VH1. VH1. Yeah, okay. BET, I didn't get, I would have loved to have been a part of that Prince tribute, but yeah. that's all right. They killed it. You know, and at Bilal especially, like Bilal, did anybody see that? He embodied Prince. Girl, I had church. It's all right. I was out there with my hands lifted. <laughs> I was about to go up to the stage and hit it like, you fell But that's the type of, you know, they honored him very, very well. So I was, I was excited just to sit back and watch. And then we were a part of the VH1 with Miss Funny Elliott. Out. So, you know, God is good all the time. Now I'm, I'm, I, I would say if anybody in this room and you have a feeling, trust the feeling. When you have that feeling, trust that feeling and go for it. And know this. Trust the feeling, but understand that it will be bumpy in the beginning, but it's only bumpy because it's supposed to happen. Does that make any sense? Yeah. Like nothing comes easy. My grandmother used to tell yep. me, too much is given, much is required, and anything worth having is worth fighting for. Four. So trust the, trust the storm while you're getting there. But once you get past that, everything that you was feeling, it'll, it'll come forth because you trusted it. Yeah. What goes through your head or your heart when you hear a song that you know is working? Do you instantly just like, is it just a visceral reaction? I can't explain it. <laughs> um, I get chills. It just takes, me, it just takes me away, especially if I get to perform it. Oh, God, I kind of zone out. 
So when I go back and watch myself, I'm like, I, di I didn't remember that. I don't remember that. I just kind of zone out with the music. I always tell people, like, I don't need a high. I don't need a drink when the music starts playing. Because I actually get a rush. I was talking with um, the guy in the back. I can't remember his name. He plays the drums. What's Brad. It? Brad. I was talking to Brad in the back because he's a drummer. And I was telling him the reason why I wanted live music on this album is because everybody has a voice. The drums has a voice. The keys have a voice. The strings have a voice. The horns have a voice. And so when, I, when they all come together and I hear it, I get a rush. I get a rush off of it. How did you get the studio, or the label, I'm sorry, not the studio. I'm, I'm like, we could, we could. no, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> How did you get them to sign on for live music on the album? Because that is so much more work and so much more... I mean, it's expensive. Yeah, a lot well, of effort. It's called favor. It wasn't. Yeah. See, it wasn't the label. It was Ron Fair, who believed in me and who called all his friends, like Ricky Minor and you know all these amazing artists that would come in and just say, "I'll do it for you." And that's when, and that was the other thing. I was like, "This is supposed to happen." And people will come in and they'll take their gifts and say, "Don't worry about the money." I'll do it for you. So this was all me and Ron Fair. I think it's a testament to your skill, too. I mean, if it, your voice is just one of a kind. Thank you. What would you tell the young Fantasia today who was performing on American Idol and who won? I would have told her to, to take control of her destiny from the beginning. She was so young and so green and so gullible. I would have told her to love herself and know that she was beautiful. She's strong. Everything about her is perfect because God made her that way. I think the young Fantasia got into a lot of situations and a lot of problems because of her own insecurities. Um, so I would have told her to take control of her destiny and that she was beautiful um, and that she can do anything that she wants to do. Oh, my God, you're making me all tear, no. tear up now. <laughs> Because if you start crying, I'm going to start crying. I just got this beat on. We both. <laughs> <laughs> what song on this album do you think most encompasses you today? I Made It, which is my gospel song that I dedicated to my grandmother that I did with Ty Tribbett, who I love. Ty, I love him. When we went in the studio and we did it live, we did we Facebooked it, I think. We, we put it out there and we brought in a choir and... um. I was happy that we ended the album with that, too, because I wanted people to know that I did make it through the storm and the rain. I did it on GMA the other day, which was very surprising to me that Good Morning America asked for the gospel song. I was kind of shocked. But then as I thought about it, I, I felt like with everything that's going on in the world today, we need uplifting. We need that type of music. Um, but that song for me is my, like, to, to everybody who did me dirty <laughs> to everybody who said I couldn't and I wouldn't. It's, all, it's that aha. Uh -huh. I, I did it. it. Yeah. Made it. <laughs> I made it. Yeah. I love it. What goes through your mind when you're performing, like on GMA, for a massive, massive audience? Do you, you just lose yourself, right? Well, I always pray before I go out and I ask God to use me to bless somebody else. I always tell people, like, I do this because it's my ministry. I don't do it because of money or a number one spot. Because I've lost twice. I lost everything I had. It blesses people. So before I go on stage, I always say, Lord, let somebody dance that ain't danced in a long time. Let somebody laugh that ain't laughed in a long time. Because for that, that hour and a half, people are coming out to actually lose themselves and get away from whatever they got going on at home. You know, they, they pay good money to come to get away and hear a show and, and that, that favorite song. So I just always ask God to use me to be a vessel to bless somebody. That's it. That's all. Who's an artist that you'd love to collaborate with on the next one? Just one? Uh, well, all right, name three. Adele. Jesse oh my God, J. you and Adele. Jesse J. Her voice is, I know she just tweeted at you. Her She's voice a is sick. Beast. Who else? Um, I got to do, I got to collaborate with Aloe Black, who's one of my favorites. Um, CeeLo, of course, I love him. I want to do someone, Erica Badu, Jill Scott. Um, I got to work with Stacey Barth on this album, and I would work with her again and again and again. 
Um, so many. Uh, I love rock, too, so there's a lot of rock bands. Tell me. I love um, AWOL Nation. Errol Smith is, like, my favorite rock band of all times. So I would like to do Dream On with him. But if he won't do it with me, if he'll just say I can do it, I'm cool with that. Uh, <laughs> I, I actually performed it on the, the BET thing that's coming on tomorrow. I got to do Dream On. And um, it's just so many artists that I would love to work with. Um, I got to go on the road for two weeks with Andrea Puccelli. That was totally different for me. I can't tell you what I was singing, <laughs> but I learned the words. <laughs> and so that for me, I mean, I think that, that time I was so, I was, I think I always get nervous before I sing. I get nervous before every show, they will tell you. And they, people say to me, you've been doing this for so long, you still get nervous, I do. And I think when I, when I performed with Andrea Puccelli, that was the most nervous I think I've ever been because it was a totally different crowd. And you have to stand there and I'm, I'm singing something that I'm like, I'm country, if I'm, am I saying it right? You know, but I've always challenged myself and to work with different artists and so there's no artist that I don't think I wouldn't work with if they're true lovers to music and they're true to their, I would, I would work with them. And I think being nervous is a great thing, right? It means that you still get excited and you still have that anticipation that yeah, you don't take it the, for granted. It just don't feel good when you... <laughs> I told my husband, I was like, I hate this feeling, you know, but once I get out there, it goes away, it goes away. And I know we have some great fans in the audience, so let's turn it over to the audience, please. We're going to start with a question from an online viewer. So yes. Xavier would like to know... Oh, what... wait, I just love your voice. <laughs> so we're going to start with a... You have the voice. You should be like... Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm sorry. Wait, should we bring him on stage? And you yeah, come on up. You got it. Oh, come on. Come on. You got this. You're not scared. Come on. Stay right here. You got this. Hey, baby. You just made him feel so like you put so me hard. on the spot. Really? <laughs> right. I'm sorry. <laughs> so our online viewer, Xavier, would like to know... <laughs> What have you learned about yourself that you may have been surprised to learn since you started in the industry? Mm. Well, I don't know. I guess the nervous thing, I thought that, that would like leave me, but I've learned that I will forever get nervous before every show. And it's surprising, let's say it's surprising to other people, but that, that is something that I, I've always been like, God, please, like, because it doesn't feel good. Why am I nervous? I've been doing this since I was five. But I've learned that that would never go away. Hey, Tasia. Hey, boo. Uh, <laughs> it's like a blessing to have you standing on stage and stuff. But I have a question. My question is, when you're on stage and performing, what is your favorite song that you love to perform and have to perform and must perform? And also, R. Kelly wrote and produced Sleeping With The Man I Love. What is it like working with the king of R&B? Well, for your first question, I would say my favorite song would be Lose to Win. And my husband tells me, every, he's like, every time you sing it, you get messed up. Like, I basically, like, get to crying and get the because I, I normally connect with somebody in the audience that I can feel is going through that. Um, and I remember when I was in that situation. So that would be my favorite, and I always have to sing that one. And working with R. Kelly, like, the dude is a musical genius. It's kind of scary. Like he can literally, you, you could be talking to him, having a conversation, and he'll take one word and create a whole song on the spot. I'm just like, yo, dude, where are you from? I don't think he's from planet Earth. <laughs> I don't. But, you know, he's very, very good at what he does. He never stops. Um, and I would, I, would, I would always work with him because he gets it. He is music. Yeah. Next question, please. Hello, Fantasia. Hi. I absolutely love your voice. Um, I think I really fell in love with your voice when you sang Lady Marmalade for Patti LaBelle in the tribute. Um, and you always add like this gospel flair to everything that you sing. Has there ever been a time in your career after American Idol that you wanted to transition into fully doing gospel or considered being a gospel artist? Nope. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. Well, let me just say this. Gospel is in me. And God is always with me. I take him everywhere I go. Never been ashamed. 
Never. On my live stage, sometimes we end it with total praise. So I'm never ashamed to, uh, you know, give him glory. I feel like he's put me out here to bless people who would probably never, ever go to church. I always say, how can, you, how can we reach the people if we're always in the church? Because I'm like, oh, y'all, all y'all saved. We hear every Sunday. I know your name. I know her name. But how are we going to get out on the streets and tell the people that God is, he lives. And he, so I feel like this is my ministry. This is my church, being out here and blessing people through all types of music. Yeah. Next question. Hi, thanks for being here. Thank you. Um, I'm so inspired by you. Um, and also, I voted for you on American Idol. Thanks, boo. Um, and, uh, <laughs> she was yeah. like, let me go ahead and add yeah, that so I was voting for you. <laughs> um, also, um, I was wondering, do you stay connected with any other, um, any other of the American Idol contestants? I do. Jennifer, of course, I, she just left off of Broadway, but I went to see her in The Color Purple and Sugar Avery, um, Latoya London. Um, you know, all of us, we stay connected. Uh, and, you know, we were together for so long. <laughs> we lived together. Like, they got on my nerves after a while. I was just like, dog. But we, we, we were together, so we became family. So we all keep in touch, yeah. And last question, please. Hi, Fantasia. Hi. My name is Tasia as well. So you is it really? Of, yes. How do you <laughs> spell it? T-A-S-I-A. Shut up. So you kind of, <laughs> you put our name on the map, seriously. <laughs> Um, it's a pleasure to meet you. I'm a huge fan, and I absolutely love the blues and jazz influence in Sleeping With The One I Love. You bring so much emotion, passion, and soul into all of your performances. If I were to go onto YouTube and look at music videos from your 2004 debut album, Free Yourself, the comments from your fans are stellar to this day. And as you said, I think it's because your music is timeless. It's so relatable, and it creates um, a whole level of authenticity. My question is, where does that source of authenticity and honesty originate from, and what inspires you to continue to create the music that you do? Well, I guess it comes from like being a soul singer. It's like you, you sing from deep within. Um, when I... You know, listen to music. As a little girl, I would always listen to, you know, like Aretha Franklin and James Brown, and I could feel when he would hit that. Ah! He, something he does, um, and other people would be like, "What is that?" All the kids are like, "What is he doing?" I was like, "You don't understand that that that, that comes from a feeling, and the feeling is not like always a sad feeling, but it's just when you are so singular, you actually pick up." Not only what you're going through, but you pick up like what people are going through. My team that's with me now, all the time, like if something's going on in the room, they try their best to cover it up, but it never works. <laughs> because I always pick it up. And, and, and I used to hate that because I would carry my stuff and everybody else's stuff. And where I was able to release it was on stage. So when I look back at myself, I, was, I, I used to hate to watch myself because I was like, oh, oh, God, why did I make that face? Or, oh, my God, my lips are quivering. Or what, what, you know, I was embarrassed until I had to, I had to come to the, you know, I had to accept who I was. So it comes from everything that I feel. It comes from what's going on in the world. For example, everything that's going on right now, I'm doing some spot dates with Maxwell. I think I only have two more shows. Love working with Maxwell, amazing, amazing. But I end my show with a song called Strange Fruit. And I do that song because back then they did music to encourage. They really had no way out. They really had no voice. You couldn't really speak out how you felt. So the only way they could do it was through their music and other people could relate because if they could do it, that's what they would say. So it's, it's me being a soulful singer and just picking up my stuff, your stuff, anybody in this room. I could hug anybody and I'm like, oh God, here we go again. I didn't picked up what he going through. And I pull him to the side and say, hey man, be encouraged. Whatever it is you're carrying, be encouraged, never give up. And nine times out of 10, they'll say, wow. 
gosh, it's like you know me. I'm going through that, 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 that. And I used to hate it. Now I accept it because that's who I am. Wait one second. When can we, where can we get the album? The album comes out tomorrow. And it's available. Wait, wait, what's today? Wednesday. Oh, that's how long I've been working. God. <laughs> Sorry, guys, Friday. <laughs> it comes out on Friday. The definition of my baby is here. And I hope that you guys enjoy it. Like I said, I want to take you on a musical journey. And I call it Rock Soul. Thank you so much. Thank you, babe.